right, thanks for joining us. We, uh, we're starting our foundations class, Biblical Foundations, and uh, lesson one tonight is our foundation in Christ Jesus. And Philippians 1, 9 and 10 is text scripture we'll use. And it says this, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may, may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. And in Jude 1 20, it says, But you, dear friends, must continue to build your lives on the foundation of your holy faith. And that's what we want to help you to do is to build your life on, on the foundation of your holy faith. And to do that, we need to get into the Word of God. We need to build a solid foundation there. So let me lay out some objectives of what, uh, what we're hoping will, will be accomplished by, by you going through this Biblical Foundations class. The first is this, that the teaching of the biblical redemptive truths, emphasizing true righteousness. We mean that you would know, it's the knowing, the being, the doing of it all. That you would have that solid foundation of the truths, emphasizing true righteousness of Jesus Christ. Second one is that it's to entrust the gospel of Christ to, to faithful believers in order that they may know, guard, and teach the true biblical faith and righteous standards. You know, God calls us to live by a standard. In 2 Timothy 3.15, Paul says to Timothy, You've been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they've given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. We, we want you to know the Holy Scriptures. We want you to grow in your knowledge and in your faith in the Word of God, knowing who He is. A third objective is to lead and to motivate students into a continual growth in the character according to God's Word. 1 Timothy 6.3 says, Some people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachings promote a godly life. Hebrew, Hebrews 6.1 so, so let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the foundational importance of re repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. No, oh, it's time to grow. It's time to go from where you are spiritually and go to a whole nother level. Time for you to grow and to mature in the Word of God. And I hope that you'll be reflecting upon it and, and where God's brought you from on your spiritual journey and just know that God has so much more for you. Fourth objective is to equip students, strengthening them and bringing them to maturity so they can reflect the image of Christ Jesus. Proverbs 2, verses 2 through 5, and it says, Tune your ears to wisdom and consecrate and concentrate Concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain the knowledge of God. So we're going to help you. We want to help you to grow. We want to help you to seek out those treasures in the Word of God. Ephesians 4.14 tells us, Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We'll not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. And there are certainly people out there who will attempt to do that. But we want you to have a solid foundation on the Word of God so that you will not ever be led astray. That you will be growing strong in your faith. A fifth objective is that we would bring you to a deeper understanding and experience the kingdom of God on earth and understand that it's in conflict with the power of Satan. In Ephesians 6, Paul tells us to put on the full armor of God because we are in a battle. Verse 12 says, For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authority of the unseen world against mighty powers of this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. And you probably know very well that you have a, a very real enemy to your soul. 
that He wants to destroy you and your life and your Christian faith. But God's already provided everything that you need to be an overcomer. That, that you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. So it's important that you know the Word so that you can understand it, so that you can apply it, that you can live it out day after day, so that you can live a victorious Christian life. Two more objectives. Number six is that it's to motivate the students through eternal biblical truths of the gospel. That means the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Jesus came and told His disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach these disciples to obey all commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, how can we fulfill the Great Commission if we don't know what it's about? If we don't understand why it's so important? So we need to know and understand the Word and through our foundations class, we hope to give you that, that knowledge and that depth in the Word. Seventh one, last one here is for our objectives, is to deepen a student's experience of Christ's love. And for each to, to know they can have a, have a personal fellowship and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 17, Jesus, Jesus speaking, verse 3, it says, and, and this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. And then in verse 21, Jesus said, I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one, as you were in me, Father, and I am in you. May they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. Verse 26, and I revealed you to them and I'll continue to do so, then your love for, for me will be in them, and I will be in them. We want you to grow in that love. We want you to grow in, that, in your experience with Christ. We want to see you so full of the Spirit and the power of God in your life. Now, there's a question that we want to answer for, for you that gets asked at times. Can, can the biblical foundations in this world can they be destroyed? The answer is no. They absolutely cannot. It is an absolute impossibility to destroy the foundations of Christian doctrine or, or biblical foundations because God's never going to allow that to happen. In, in 1 Corinthians 3.11, it, it says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. We have a foundation and no other foundation can be laid. That foundation of Jesus Christ can never be destroyed. Never. L Luke 21, 33 says, Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. The words of Jesus are never going to be, never going to disappear. They, his foundation that He's laid can never be destroyed. In 2 Timothy 2, 19, it says, But God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone. Like the foundational cornerstone, it, it will never be destroyed. God's foundation is indestructible in this world. And it, it's, it's of utmost importance that every one of us have God's foundation laid in our own lives. It, it's not something that just happens because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It, it takes work. It, it takes diligence. It takes us desiring and then applying ourselves to, to study and to understand the, the Word and to, to begin to apply that in our lives. And as you do that, of course, there will be testings and there will be trials that will, will, that will come, but growing in your foundation of Christ, you'll find it easier and easier to overcome those things. And the Lord's desire for you is that you would have a firm foundation in Him. The devil isn't particularly concerned with people who are just so distracted and unconcerned about their biblical foundation. They don't pose a threat to him. We want to raise up, we want to raise up a generation of, of believers who have a firm foundation in Christ Jesus, in the Word, that can go and do and accomplish great things for the kingdom of God. 
Let's talk about God's foundation. Let's talk about this, maybe a new word for you, superstructure. See, superstructure, the word teaches us that our lives are not only built on God's foundation, but there's a principle here that it's supposed to become a superstructure. So what's a superstructure? Definition is this. It's the part of a building or construction built entirely above its foundation or, or the basement or any structure built on something else. Our lives are supposed to be built on the firm foundation of Christ Jesus. Paul says to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, 2 and 2, You've heard me teach these things that have been confirmed by, by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. And in the next chapter, verse 15, he says, you, You've been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they've given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. I love this verse. Verse 16, All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. See, God's plan is for Jesus to be first and foremost in every one of our lives, for us to be in a growing, developing, maturing relationship with Him, becoming mature saints of God. When that happens, we become this indestructible foundation which Christ is the chief cornerstone of, and the superstructure can be continually built. It can be built upon your life. God's intention is that our lives be built on the solid rock Christ Jesus. That's the foundation. That's the cornerstone. But we're supposed to be responsible to help build and build that in somebody else's life. So we're to teach others the truths that we have learned. That's a building a superstructure. But you can't teach truths that you haven't applied yourself to learn already. Our lives will be, be built on that biblical foundation. We're to, we're to know and to grow. We need to know and grow. You need to help some others to know and to grow. God's superstructure is saints of God growing in, His, in the image of His Son, and when that happens, God, God's purpose will never be defeated here on this earth. This is why it's so important for you to know and grow, to obey the, the Word of God. That's why it's important, I believe, for every Christian, not only to be born again, which you have to be to be a Christian, but that every Christian be Spirit-filled and, and, and allow the Holy Spirit to direct their life, to guide them. Our, our Christian life is to be built on something solid that can never be destroyed. So is your life... Is your life built on that? What's God's objectives? I believe it's this, that men and women would be perfected in Christ. I believe that God's superstructure of saints growing in the image of His Son so that His purpose can never be defeated. I believe God's objective is to have spiritual sons and daughters, one, ones who are willing to yield the desires of their, of their life, the desires of their mind and their body to the Spirit of God. And that we need to be far more concerned with the spiritual growth, not only of ourselves, but also concerned about one another. This is God's foundation within us. And that foundation, it will last forever. Before we finish up, let's talk about the context of the Bible. See, the Bible is not merely a book con containing communication from God. It is it's God's revelation of Himself. It's God's revelation of Himself. And, and in the interest of grace, it is, it is God giving Himself in the limitation of words. And I think about John 1 beginning at verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, 
and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You know, and the, the darkness will never overcome it. The Bible is not some crazy fairy tale. It's, it's not some romance novel that we can, we can read and distract our minds for, for a few days and then go on with life as normal. The Bible is God giving Himself to us, and that ought to, it ought to impact our life. It ought to change our life. It ought to, it ought to direct our very steps and our actions. It's a divine complement of the laws of nature, of conscious, and of humanity. And, and it introduces us to a whole new universe of, of revelation facts not known with just common knowledge or common sense. The context of the Bible is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Him. It's a personal relationship with Him. And the words of God and the, and the Word of God stand together, and there is no separation be, between them. No, no individual experience is of, of the utmost value unless it is up to the standard of the Word of God. And speaking about Jesus, Revelation 19.13 says of Jesus, He wore a robe dipped in blood, and His title was the Word of God. So who is Jesus to you? Jesus Christ was born into this world, but He wasn't of this world. He, he came into history from outside of history. Je Jesus didn't evolve from our history. The Lord's birth was an advent. He, he did not come from the human race. He came from heaven. From heaven, left heaven, came to this earth. Jesus is not the best human being to ever have lived. No, He was God and is God who left heaven to come here to, to live as man. 100% God, but yet 100% man. He's God incarnate, not coming from man. Not man becoming a God, but it was God taking on human flesh, coming from the outside. His life is the highest, it's the holiest, and it was all about Him being willing to leave the, the highest place to come to the lowliest place. The Lord entered through the Virgin Mary, and just as our Lord came outside of history, He also comes to us from the, from the outside we have to allow Him to come into our lives. We, in essence, can have that, have our own Bethlehem experience and allow the Son of God to come and be birthed into our life, give us a new birth, live in our lives, that we have a personal relationship with Him. Have you invited Jesus Christ into your life? Have you committed yourself to fully to Him and to live for Him? If not, this is where it all needs to start. That you invite Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. If you haven't done that, stop everything else you're doing. And I encourage you right now, invite Him in. And that you pray a prayer like this. Lord, I was born a sinner. And I'm in need of your grace and your mercy. And today I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse my life. Wash my sins away, Lord. The, today I repent of my sins and I, I turn to you. I accept that you are the Son of God who left heaven to come to this earth. You came with a destiny to go to a cross and die for my sins. And you died and on the third day you were raised to life again. And Father, I invite you, Lord, I invite you into my life. I commit myself to you, and I am asking you, Lord, to help me faithfully live for you and serve you every day of my life. 
And I ask it all and pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, I hope you'll contact me. Connect with us through our, through our website, through our social media. I want to keep praying for you, and I want to encourage you to continue to, to go through this Foundations class. As, as we take this journey together, I hope you'll, you'll remain faithful and go through this with us. God will, will truly help you build a strong foundation in which you can, you can live your spiritual life. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this. We love you here at New Life Church.